to establish your current baseline. Right? Regardless of fast runner or slow runner, each person needs to establish their own baseline. Each runner should have his own baseline. So uh, you do that by doing a test, a time trial. You can do a 5K time trial. Right? You can use a race, a recent race time, or you can go do a specific time trial. I like to do a two mile time trial. This is based on the idea, uh, remember the old Cooper test? It's a 12 minute test. You go have a, uh, an athlete go out and run 12 minutes, see how far they can go, and then you figure out how fast they were going. Right? 12 minutes is approximately their velocity at VO2 max. That's the maximum they can do. I do a two mile test because you know what's, what standard distance is approximately 12 minutes. Right, two miles. It's a great starting point, and we call that their velocity at VO2 max. Now, for the sake, uh, the ease of <coughs> explanation here, we're going to use an athlete who runs a 12 minute two mile. Right, you go out right, and you try a two mile race or two mile time trial, and the time comes up as 12 minutes right, for a two mile race. Okay. 12 minutes is six minutes per mile and we'll use that as our starting point. Their velocity at VO2 max is a six minute mile, right? That's 10 miles an hour. That's why it's so easy, right? It's 10. So if aerobic base pace is 70% of that, right, that's 0.7 on your, or 7.0 on your treadmill, 7.0 on your treadmill, and that's eight minutes and 34 per mile. So on their easy day aerobic based training runs, right, that athlete is going to run 834 per mile. Give or take 15, 20 seconds, right? Because it could be as fast as about 75% and could be slower. Right? This is great for training groups. You don't have to train with somebody who's exactly your speed. Right? Um, train 15, 20 seconds slower either direction uh, or faster right? and still be training aerobically uh, pretty well. Okay? 84%, right? 8.4 miles per hour on the treadmill is 709 per mile. That's only for marathon runners. And Daniels calls this the no man's land, the area between aerobic base pace and lactate threshold pace. If you are running faster than aerobic base pace on your easy runs, you're not running easy. Right? You're not going to get the physiological adaptations that you want out of running if you run 84%. And you're not running conversationally, you're not taking care of your body like you need to. You're not giving yourself those adaptations, the mitochondria, the red blood cells, etc. This is actually a really comfortable pace. Most people can run 84% right, or 82% for all their daily runs right, and feel fine. But they're not getting all the benefits that they need. Right? If you want to improve your recovery time, uh, between hard interval bouts, you should be doing aerobic base days at 70%. If you're training here, you're not actually training aerobically. So we got to watch out for that. That's a significant difference. A minute 25 per mile, that's a huge deal. And lactate threshold, 8.8 .8 on your treadmill, If again, if you're a 12 minute two miler, right? And that's 649 per mile. That's only 20 seconds faster than marathon training pace. But that's a full, what, minute and 45, 145 per mile faster? That's significantly faster. Now, that breaks down to a 414 kilometer or a 142, 400 per lap. And that's lactate threshold. Put that right there. The next training pace is VO2 max development, where we're trying to stress the aerobic system to improve the uh, capacity of um, blood that, or I'm sorry, blood enriched or in oxygen enriched blood that's carried through the system. And that's at 98%, so 9.8 miles per hour is 607 per mile, right? Or 348 per kilometer, or 131 per 400 meter lap. And then finally, the things that we call overspeed. Right? These aren't you know, sprints by any means. When you go out and do a session of repeat 400s right, or 200s, whatever the case may be, right, you're going at 110% of, uh, of your velocity VO2 max. That's a minute 21 per 400 or uh, about 41 
40 and a half, let's call it 41 per 200 meters right, on the track, running economy days. Now these are all based on this number up here, that 12 minute two mile, two mile time trial that your athlete did. Six minutes per mile is 100%, so 70% of that speed is 834s per mile, 84% of that is 709 per mile, 88% of that is 649 per mile, 98% of that is 607 per mile. That makes sense? So we start there. We start with the baseline. We say, okay, Johnny, you're running you know, a 12 minute two mile, so we can calculate how fast you should be going on all the different days of the week. This is essential stuff to know. Now, of course it will change. Of course it will change. Right? About six weeks into the cycle, Right, the body has made the adaptations going to make and you need to do one of two things. Well, you need to add a stress and you can do it one of two ways. You can increase the volume, right? you could change the amount of mileage that they're doing at these exact paces to continue to make improvements, or you can change the speeds. Now say, you know, four weeks into the season or five weeks into the season, right, you run uh, a 5K again and you go, oh man, my, or you run an, another two mile race right, and your time improves. 30 or 40 seconds over the mile, right? Well, you'd adjust these times accordingly and keep training at them, right? Those are the five paces, right? And that's um, one way to do it. You could calculate them out um, by saying how many miles per hour this is and figure out in miles per hour how fast these things are. Okay. Now, people often ask me about running economy. I see the hand, I suspect that's what you're gonna ask me about. How can running economy be over 100% of your velocity? If I'm only capable of running six minute miles, how can I run faster than that? Remember, this is a two mile test. Your absolute best in two miles, and it's 100% of your two mile speed. I mean, this is 110% of that, this is 120%. Any kid or athlete, any athlete who can run a 12 minute two mile can certainly run faster than 41 seconds for half a lap. But these are not sprints. These are under control uh, repetitions. They are intended to help develop running economy. Right? It makes you faster overall. It gives you more biomechanical efficiency. You run those 200s and 400s not to improve your energy system, but to improve your efficiency as you run 